Okay, we are back, and as you can see, the dye has completely dried. Left with a very nice, rich, dark color at this point. Um, if you hear SpongeBob playing in the background, well, I've said it a hundred times, I will not edit my daughter out of my videos, and she is watching SpongeBob, so enjoy. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to buff the residue off of this thing. Now in my last tutorial you actually see me just use a napkin and you're gonna see a lot of different things that I do in my tutorials. There's gonna be a lot of things I do the same but a lot of things that I do differently and the reason I'm doing that is I want to show everybody that there are multiple ways that you can do the exact same things. You don't have to do the same thing over and over again. So this time I'm going to use my preferred method and that is simply taking a uh, piece of wool, scrap wool, and we're going to give this thing a quick buffing. I don't know if you can see but there's already a nice shine on that sheath okay and after it's all buffed up this leather actually took that dye really well this thing is gonna look just super sexy after we put a nice leather finish on it and a uh, coat of oil it's gonna look really really nice so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually apply something on the flesh side just to make it look a little nicer now in my last video I used this here. I hope you can make that out because I am not going to try to pronounce that. I've never learned how to pronounce it and I dang sure can't do it now. But this time we're going to use tan coat instead. Now the reason I'm going to use tan coat is because this is actually really nice leather. The um, flesh side is really nice and finished and so there's not a whole lot of um, what I call hairy leather that I need to lay down so we're just going to use a tan coat on this one What, baby? Okay, if you're cold, turn off the fan. It's okay. Now, I do want to point out where we're going to glue in the welt. You don't want to apply anything to that area because that will cause your uh, contact cement to not set up too well. What, babe? What, baby? No, you can't have any cereal. We're going to have dinner here in a little bit. And our tan coat is applied, so now I'm just going to set this aside and let it dry. Alright, so now we're just going to go back and touch up the burnish job that we did earlier. Okay guys, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm just sewing up the belt loop. And then I'm not going to show how I'm stitching this up. I'm going to actually use a, um, a saddle stitch. And I'm going to try to show you um, how to do that when I actually sew up the entire sheath. 
it's a little difficult to demonstrate on something like this whenever I'm having to go you know from the outside to the inside of the sheath and everything else so I will do my best to show you that stitch like I said whenever I go and stitch the sheath itself alright guys let's go ahead and glue in the welt now now before we go glue in the welt you can use multiple things in the past video I used rubber cement okay rubber cement is is great it's cheap works fine the problem with rubber cement at times is if you in a hurry okay let's say that you bond these two together now you've got to let that sit for roughly 24 to 30 hours before it really forms a good solid bond um, you don't always have that kind of time or maybe you're just impatient the stuff that I like right now is my favorite is this stuff right here it's uh, called echo weld and it's a water-based contact cement uh, you can get this from Tandy's leather and the reason I like this so much is the fact that it is not as messy as rubber cement it goes on a lot easier um, once you apply it you don't have to let it sit for 12 minutes before you actually bond your material together it's ready almost instantly um, it bonds really fast and very strong so instead of waiting 24 to 30 hours all you really need to wait is roughly 15 to 20 minutes and then you can continue working on your project which is definitely very nice so we are going to open this up now before you put any type of adhesive on your welt you're going to have your flush side and your smooth side take some sandpaper and scuff up your smooth side that way it gives it something to really bond to alright now those lines that we put in earlier and also where you can see we didn't die at that's going to come in handy right now because now we know exactly where to glue and where not to glue this stuff does not have to be put on thick in fact I've kind of found that a uh, thinner coat works better than a thick coat I've heard of people using um, wood glue also for leather work and this stuff is actually pretty similar to a wood glue just bonds really really strong I've never personally used wood glue so I don't know if it bonds really strong or not so I can't really say anything about it just, just never used it I was a little hesitant to try this stuff to be honest with you but I tell you what the moment I used it for the first time I knew that uh, I was going to be using it a lot more a very light coat on here Now, like I said, this stuff bonds really fast and really hard. So when you put the squeeze on, it's going to stay. So make sure you get it right the first time.
back and give it a nice pinch. And that piece is not going anywhere now. Now with rubber cement, I would suggest that you clamp this down and let it sit for a few minutes before you go gluing this other part on, but with this stuff you really don't need to wait. You can do it pretty much instantly. Now you'll notice that the welt has a little bit of overhang and that's simply because I've moved it down for a little drain hole. That is absolutely no big deal. We will obviously go back and trim that off nice and flush. So that is not a big deal at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my contact adhesive on this side and this side and lock them bad boys together. All right, we are all glued up. Now, like I said, you can let this sit for roughly 15 to 20 minutes and continue on working if you use this stuff. If you're using a regular contact adhesive, let it sit 24, 30 hours. Okay, it is time to pull the sheath down and we are going to sand it. Now it's been raining and everything outside, so here is the redneck way of doing it without getting your house filthy dirty so that your wife doesn't murder you. That's right, you just duct tape your hose on the table and right up to your Dremel tool. You guys just thought I was fancy. All right, and after we're done using the Dremel tool, that's what I do is I have a nice fine piece of sandpaper. In this case, it's not a sandpaper, but a little sanding pad, uh, very fine. And then I'll go back over that edge so it smooths it out real nice. So now when we go back and we burnish that, it's gonna give it a real nice look. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the stitch groove. Um, don't bevel yet. If you do your edge beveling, um, your stitch groover might, might roll up on the top of your sheath. So go ahead and leave your edge just as it is. And don't do your backside. We drill through this thing, you know, if you don't, if you're not perfectly straight, it's going to get off. So we're going to save this side until after we do our holes. Now we're just going to go through and mark where we are going to put our holes. It's kind of funny because in my last tutorial video I actually had somebody point out the fact that this was not a uh, not the appropriate tool to mark my holes with and it just kind of made me laugh because um, not entirely sure if you noticed this but these things are equally spaced and uh, will do the job just fine you don't have to have the perfect tool for the job every time
My kid is in the background playing princess or something. Probably playing brave. She got a new brave dress. What are you talking to? Talking to the camera. All right, now there is definitely a trade-off when you go and you use a, an actual drill press or a Dremel tool or anything like that to drill your holes. Your entrance side is going to look very nice, but your exit side will look a little bit rough. So when you're going through and marking, or excuse me, using your stitch groover and everything else, um, Give it a little bit more attention to detail. Now, next thing we are going to do is, now that that's all done, is we are going to use our edge beveler and we are going to bevel our edges. Alright, so the next thing that I am going to do is I am actually going to apply another thin coat of dye to penetrate my drill holes and my welt and all that good stuff. Now a lot of people will actually take a little brush, you know, and brush in those stitch marks. And I will do that if I have treated my leather with, you know, some sort of uh, a leather finish or something along those lines then obviously I'll go in and do it because you know your, your dye is not going to look that great um, doing it over the top of a finish and all that um, this does work relatively well um, you're not going to have any you know discolorations or anything like that in your leather by putting a small light coat on this so Okay, so as you can see, that coat has dried, and we don't have any streaking going on or anything like that. Now you can notice that I've went ahead and I've dyed the underside black. I have not burnished it or anything like that yet, so it still looks very rough, but we'll take care of all that here in just a little bit. Now you'll notice that I traded in my gloves for a pair of latex gloves and that is simply because we are going to apply a leather finish now and um, I have a lot of people ask me why I wear the gloves when I work with leather and the main reason I wear gloves um, number one I work in a job that my hands get very dirty oily greasy and everything else and I don't want to transfer 
all that muck and gunk onto your guys' products. Um, number two, fingernails can dig and gouge into leather, so I suggest you keep them very short or wear gloves. And another reason I wear gloves is whenever I sew this stuff and you really cinch on it, well, that thread will dig into your hands and having just a little small layer of gloves on can make all the world of difference. But anyway, so let's move on. We are going to use some tan coat and there's all kinds of leather finishes out there. All kinds. Um, this is one that I really like. Um, but like I said, there's all kinds. So what we're going to do is, on the directions it says, you know, to use a, uh, a, a wool swab or a brush or a spray bottle. Um, I don't really like using a swab or a brush. It seems like it might streak a little bit. Is what I like using is just a, you know, just a, a scrap piece of, well, this is a t-shirt, just an old rag or something like that. A little bit on there, and just start rubbing it in. And the other things I like about tan coat is it doesn't stink. Some leather finishes just smell horrible. And when it dries, your sheath no longer smells like leather. It smells like crap. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry for a little bit. If I feel like it needs another coat, then I'll go through it and I'll put another coat on it. But I think it's probably going to be just fine the way it is. And after we're done, give it a nice buffing with the clean side of your, uh, your rag or a nice scrap of wool. And it'd be nice, left with that nice shine. Looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Alright, so the next step is we are going to go ahead and sew this thing. Okay, guys. This is the most difficult part for me to actually show and demonstrate on camera. So I am going to have Mrs. Wolf give me a hand. And I'm going to try to demonstrate this saddle stitch the best I can. First things first, get your thread and put a needle on both sides, okay? Now, we're going to start at the top of the sheath. And we're going to start at the third hole. We're going to run our needle through. And we're going to pull thread evenly. So you got the same amount of thread hanging out on both sides. This is a absolute pain in the butt to try to demonstrate on camera. Okay. Now, we're going to go up to this hole. Run our needle and thread through. We're going to come around to the back side, do the exact same thing. Kaylee, shh, baby. Kaylee, can you please go eat your popcorn? 
Thank you. Now, once you pull it through both sides, pull it tight. And move up to the top hole. Same thing. Now, if you're wondering why we're moving up instead of down, that is quite simply because we're going to put a double stitch up here at the top where our stress points are. So we're going to work all the way to the top of the sheath, just like this. And now we're going to reverse and go all the way down using that same technique. When you go through the second time, it can be kind of tough. So it's nice to have a pair of pliers handy, which I didn't grab. Let me grab my pliers right quick. can't tell my kid's excited she's got a bowl of popcorn and she's just loving it a little nerd have I mentioned that it's difficult to demonstrate how to do this on camera Okay, well I hope you got the idea of what it is that I'm going to do. I'm going to continue that saddle stitch, like I said, all the way down, and then I'll show you what I'll do when I get down at the bottom. If you have any questions on this particular stitch, um, please feel free to ask, or I'm sure that there's other videos you know, on YouTube that demonstrate this particular stitch as well. Now you guys can see why anybody that does leather and they see somebody try to pass off handmade goods when somebody uses a sewing machine drives us absolutely insane. Because sewing a sheath by hand is very time consuming. I don't like using a lot of machines on my sheaths, but for this one I wanted to show you guys the drill press or the Dremel tool so you could see that it can be done just fine. And of course sanding can be done by hand also.
Okay, so here we are to the very end. Now, just like up here at the top, we are going to reverse direction and we are going to go back. Instead of three spaces, we are going to go back four spaces though. And that's going to happen more times than you know. But, fortunately, it happened on the very last hole. Okay, and also all we are going to do is we are going to pull this up just a little bit. And we are going to trim this off relatively close to where you have roughly about an eighth of an inch of thread sticking out. We're going to flip it over and we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. In my last tutorial, I showed you guys to take it through and uh, put a knot in it and singe it. Well, this is another way you can do it. You're going to give up just a tiny, tiny bit of durability and you're going to add a lot of looks to it. You're not going to be left with that ugly knot you're going to uh, be left with basically an invisible knot. So basically, we've got that sticking out, and we're simply just going to take a lighter, singe it, kind of stick it right down in the hole, just like that. So the next thing we are going to address is the ugly bottom side. We're going to burnish that up and make that look really nice. That is the one thing that drives me nuts and one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to leather work is you see all these really great sheaths and then you flip it over like this and it just looks absolutely horrible. It's not finished and I just think that's very tacky. If you're going to do leather, especially if you're going to sell it to somebody, go that extra mile, make it look good, take pride in your work. Just dampening the edges. And last time I showed you how you could chuck it up in a drill and cheat a little bit, but this time we're going to do it the old way.
Okay, so as what I'm doing now is uh, I've burnished my edge or slicked it, whatever you want to say, and uh, I've applied edge coat, and now I'm just taking a piece of denim denim cloth, scrap of jeans, polishing it out. I'll put a couple coats of that on there and not only do I put it on my my edge here but I'll go ahead and I'll put it around you know all my edges and everything else and the last thing we're gonna do is apply a little bit of this Aussie leather conditioner this is my favorite conditioner And here is the final product. Freshly oiled up. Turned out very nice. So now, it's the moment of truth. Let's just take a look and see if it was a success or a failure. That, my friends, is what I call a success. That thing sits in there very nice. Not too snug definitely not loose well guys hope you guys have taken something away from this video or the last several videos I do enjoy making these videos for you guys so I do hope that you're learning something from them if you guys have any questions obviously feel free to ask me and I'd be more than happy to answer anything that I can if uh, you yourself are a leather worker and you have any tips for me, then uh, again, I would love to hear them. So, as always guys, have a good one.